Hi everyone, welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Well, back onto the Marklin project. Um, you may have seen a couple of weeks ago, I put a video uh, on the channel uh, about the Marklin uh, system that I just uh, acquired. So, just a bit of background on the story. Um, basically, it's my, my cousin's husband's late father's project, um, and I've been entrusted to try and get it working, basically. So uh, I want to pick the layout up and uh, the video a couple of weeks back, you can see it on the channel if you're interested. I just talked through the digital system which is all new to me. This uh, three rail track with uh, pickups running down the centre of the track, again all new to me. And uh, you know underneath the uh, locos you can see the, uh, the pickup there that uh, gets hidden once it's down on the track, it's quite effective really. Um, but uh, also in that video I looked from under, uh, the underside of the uh, layout and there's just wires everywhere and trying to fathom out exactly where all the wires are going um, and round in various places on the track if I just point to this one here you can see the track is split the track is actually split into blocks um, that all seem to work onto either a control system or a monitoring system now the box that came with it with all the electronics there was a quite a smell of burning in there so I think there's something wrong I couldn't fathom it out and the biggest problem with it all was trying to work out what it was supposed to do rather than uh, <laughs> you know that's that's the first step what was it meant to do and then you can try and um, debug the system and find out what was going on well I spent many many evenings looking through the folders that came with the layout and with my rudimentary electronics uh, I managed to figure out that basically it was a block system it was a monitoring system but I just get the feeling that there's something missing, maybe a, you know, maybe a computer that plugged in or something or a screen. Um, so anyway, cut a long story short, I want to run this as digital. And as I explained in the previous video, the digital system from Marklin did come with the layout. Um, and this wouldn't have been compatible actually with the block system, the way the pickups work. So what I've done, I've left most of the wiring in situ. I've just cut a few of the tails off just to clean it up a little bit. And then where we've got these little splits in the track, I have cross-wired them. So I've basically wired out the block system for now. Now it's very clear if anybody uh, in the future was to pick up this layout, it's very clear where I've added wires in. Um, I've, it's not the neatest job that I've done, but um, I've put those in and I've got the track working. And you can see also, if I just lean over here, you can see the, I mentioned before that it's uh, built in layers. Well, the lower layer is in place now, and this upper right layer is also just resting on top. So I get some idea now of how, how the layout is actually looking. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good actually. So um, in terms of the wiring, I've gone ahead uh, with my trusty decoders here. So this is the K83 I mentioned earlier or in the previous video, sorry, K83 and K84. So K84 is a switch for on and off. K83 is for doing the points. I've used both of them on the layout. I did actually have to go and buy uh, three or four more of these um, because basically the layout came with one and in the wiring up, I've uh, needed three or four of them. I've also used the K84 for these. I wasn't sure what these were before, but they are um, decoupling points. So basically run your train across, these pop up and uh, detach the couplings in between the train and the uh, the wagons that uh, or carriages that have been pulled. So I've got all the points all wired up, all of them work. Had to replace this one, this one was completely dead, this one had to come out and a uh, new replacement put in there. And in terms of wiring up, I did actually make a big mistake. So with the control units, um, basically you, you've got your, your control with the, you can see the you know the dial on here and you program in which locos you want they go through into a control unit the control unit attaches to the track but also attaches to the points etc now i wired it up as two separate control modules so one control module i wanted to do the track that was from this left hand side and then on the right hand side if i just bring you across here you can see i'd wired in the uh, keyboard which controls all the points and I went to the boxes and found that I'd only actually got one control unit. So I had to go on to uh, good old eBay and purchase another control unit to go on there, which cost me, I think it was 10, 15 quid. It wasn't too bad. So that's given me the two control units on either side of the layout, one here and one here. So without further ado, I've been rabbiting on for a little while. I'm going to go and plug this in. I've got a loco on the track here and I'll just do a little demonstration of where I've got to. 
Right, this is a Loco 20, so I'm just going to plug that into the box here. You can't really see it because of the sunlight. I've actually got this set up in the garden at the moment under a little bit of cover, so uh, it's quite difficult to see. And you can see my other project that I'm doing. I've got paint on the back of my hands where I've just been uh, just been painting the uh, fenced in York railway body, but uh, that's uh, that's for another day. Just uh, warming up here with the smoke module, so obviously the power is getting to the track. But I need to program in number 20. That's this loco. Um, if you're wondering how to assign the addresses on these uh, vintage marking, go back to the previous video. There's a little switch box inside each of the locos, and you set up the addresses that way. And then let's give this a, some power. or we'll going the wrong way. So I mentioned before to change direction, you just overturn the dial, and that switches the direction. I'm just going to follow this round the layout for now. That should come back round, I hope so. Across the bridge. There you go. Now, as you probably might have noticed, there are a couple of points that I do need to look at. This one here, just as it comes off of the bridge, where I've put the new set of points in, you'll see the loco just jumps and it does lose power just for a split second. And there's also another joint over the back where I am losing. It's roughly around here, you'll see that. There it goes. Just skips a beat um, where it's just losing some uh, uh, connection to the track. So I need to look at those, so a little bit of work to do on the track, but really pleased to see the loco going round. So let me just go to the other end of the uh, board, and uh, let's have a play with some points. Now one thing I haven't done is I haven't done myself a key <laughs> as to which of these buttons works which set of points. I will fix that onto here at some point. Um, so for the moment I'm a bit of a little bit of guesswork. Now I know number four is operating one of the... Um, uh, decoupling um, ramps so I'm just going to switch that over here and you can hear it going but I'm just going to move the camera over so that you can see what that does and you can see it just lifts up that little um, ramp there and basically um, as I say this is on a K84 so this is a, a proper proper switch if you like so it's an on off switch which moves that to the position you want it in now let's come back over to the points Right, so this is uh, switch number six, and you can see here, I'm switching the point there, and I'm going to send the loco around the other track. And then various other switches around the board. Um, I've got uh, points working, you can see that set up working down there. And this set here, you can see. So all of the points are all wired in, they're all on a switch here. And also the, uh, if I just bring this over the other ramp, this up and down as well as you see there yeah so all of the, all of the points are wired in I've got the wires here ready don't know why this point was taken out obviously this was what uh, what uh, the previous owner was working on um, uh, before the project was put down um, but obviously I've got a set of points to go back in here so this will be the first thing that I do get that set of points back in here this is uh, an analog engine that uh, I managed to pick up on eBay plan to do a conversion over to digital at some point on that one um, so that's a that's a project in waiting but I used that initially when I had analog running through the track just to check all my circuits so that's been very useful um, and as I say I've got these these are already wired into one of the switches so I've just got to connect those up to a point and um, that will then operate this area yeah. right so once those set of points are back in Obviously we've got this track here that climbs round and previously just stopped in space. Um, this was actually dragged down at uh, board level. Now, when I was digging through some of the boxes and some of the bits of wood that came with the layout, I found this piece, didn't know what it was for. It's only when I dropped the upper section on, it became quite clear that this all slots in and obviously screws on there. So this would allow this track to continue round um, up onto here, I guess some sort of station or something would open up at the end there where I'll extend this board over this area here 
and uh, I'll drop a station in. Now the Fallow Roadway running underneath here, what I'm probably going to do is finish this about here, so the station's there, so some of the ra roadway will be visible um, and allow the truck cars to go around on there. I'll have a go at getting those to work on another day, um, concentrate on the layout for now. And I had this set of points over here, which uh, again they're operational, these can be operated from uh, over on the control box, um, but with a little siding that went to nowhere. Well, in searching through all the bits and pieces and sort of laying it out on the table, I've actually got this large piece here which uh, screws onto the back of the layout. Now this adjoins to the siding and you can see all the cork strips already been laid that will run all the way down. Um, this then allows access to the underside of the layout and the lower track um, which has a number of loops in there and a number of points so I'm guessing this is more of a sort of storage. Uh, I'll film under there, I don't know if it's going to come out but uh, this is kind of storage under there for the locos. There's three sets of points down there that allow uh, control on um, you know which points are being accessed. Those again are all I've wired all of those in, so they're all ready to go. Um, they all actuate from the uh, switchboard over in the far corner there. So I think next steps, as I say, I'm going to get this screwed onto the layout, get the track put in so that uh, the locos can come from that siding down onto the lower level. Hopefully, give the lower lower level a little bit of a test run and make sure that's all okay. And then I'm going to proceed with a little bit of theming on the top here, try and extend this board further down, um, get some sort of station in, uh, scenery in there. And then once that's done, the uh, plan is to move it in above one of my existing railways, um, which is going to be a feat in itself. Um, so the railway that you see with all the bridges um, sort of in the background when I film uh, in the workshop, um, I'm going to try and mount this above it um <laughs> and if you're successful yeah have a multi-tiered uh, setup there um but uh, as i say i do want to get some scenery on here before i i go too far with it anyway i just sort of share with you where i've got to i've got the layout running i've got it going around um got all the points working um really pleased in the progress i've made it's a you know it's a good couple of weekends and a few evenings working on it to get it this far um but uh, now it's there with all the controls all wired in um, time to uh, time to move into onto some scenery. One final thing to say before I wrap up the video. Um, I found this uh, infrared control module in the box um, with its associated handset. Um, I've wired that in onto the points control, but uh, so far no success with it. Um, despite uh, you know reading up on it and trying to trying to get things to move, nothing's working there. I think it's probably the handset that's uh, not working, but uh, we'll look into that in the future. So anyway, I'm going to leave that one there. Um, if you enjoyed the update please uh, do uh, give it a like and uh, yeah why not subscribe have a look at the channel there's plenty on there and if you're interested in this market stuff as I say I've already done a video that uh, looks into a little bit more detail on how the digital setup works and also if you're interested to uh, have a look on what's the uh, what was on the underside of this layout uh, yeah check out that video anyway I'm going to leave this one there so uh, yeah thank you ever so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one